Here's a very odd question for some of you. If you had to walk as long as you could, how far do you think you can walk? And what I want to highlight specifically is when you do these walks and you stop, why do you think you would stop? Would you stop because you're tired? Would you stop because you have something to do? A little bit of everything. And then what would you have to do that's more important than walking? The reason why I mention this is because I was sitting around the other day and I was thinking, well, damn, you know what? I'm tired of studying and sitting down and being stagnant and I feel like shit. I don't feel like I'm doing anything productive outside of doing studying. And honestly, I was studying French because it's mandatory and that sucks. So I was like, screw it. Let me walk on a treadmill and study at the same time and let me see how long I can walk for. Why? Well, damn, I don't know. Something to do. But I was interested in to see how long could I walk for which is a really weird thing, I will admit, because I want to see what kind of excuses I come up with to make me stop. And like, would it it be because of my knees? Would it be because of uh, I have something else to do? I don't know. Let's find out. The reason why I thought about this was because there was a UFC fighter named Forrest Griffin who wrote a book called Got Fight. And for those of you who follow the channel, very big into mixed martial arts. It was a part of my childhood growing up. I was a heavy set kid who uh, got bullied quite a bit. So I needed to Uh, develop some personal attributes that would help with that realm. And one thing that Forrest Griffin said was it's important to be physically challenged to better understand not only your ability to deal with physical adversity, but to develop the coping attributes that can allow you to withstand uh, specific types of adversity, not even necessarily just physical. And so for him, he would get on a treadmill and he would turn it up as high as he can and he would sprint for as long as he could until he felt like he was going to pass out and then he would stop thing about treadmills is it will keep going whether or not you keep going unless you have a little safety pin on. So that's what he did. I personally have found this to be very beneficial if you are physically able to do so. And it doesn't always have to be, you know, being on a treadmill for hours. It could be a Stairmaster for five minutes. For some people that would kill them. Kind of killed me to be honest. I've been on a Stairmaster for five minutes before. It's not the funnest thing. I will say that. Anyway, so the point is, what do you do to physically challenge yourself, if anything, and what types of attributes have you been able to cultivate yourself? I think we all have the excuse that we do not have time, but as a wise man once said, who I heard, he was a big military individual, he said, I don't give a shit, you have to make time. And I think it's true. How long does it take to get on the floor and do a couple push-ups? You could have a minute and try as hard as you can to do as many push-ups as you can. That's physical adversity. You're also getting stronger. We all have a minute to spend. I do not care what your excuse is. And if you're not physically able to do a push-up, find a modification, do a different exercise, something. But I think physical hardship, or at least uh, that's not a good word, physical adversity, let's put it that way, is a good thing for all of us to deal with. And I think we all feel better about ourselves when we're able to endure it, deal with it, move on, get stronger. I think it helps your mind. I think it helps most importantly, your emotional well-being and your physical well-being. And I think we should all do it. Therefore, I decided to make a video talking about how long you could walk on a treadmill because I don't know, maybe some of you will find this uh, to be valuable of sorts. Anyway, let me know.